It is now time for question period. The member from Nepean Park. Thank you very, uh, very much, Speaker. Yes. Uh, my question is for the Premier. On October 28th, the Premier said, and I quote, the agreements were in line with our net zero bargaining framework when she was referring to the secret union payouts with the teachers. On November 25th, the Premier said three more times that agreements were made with a net zero framework. Four stretch goals in a very small amount of time. Now today we find out from the CP's Allison Jones that the deals, quote, actually come with an additional $300 million cost. No. But that's just the tip of the iceberg because we know the Auditor General has yet to return Question. her report into her investigation of these secret payouts. So I ask the Premier, how does net zero equal $300 million? Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Speaker, and I know that the Minister of Education is going to want to comment on this. And we're what we're talking about is uh, nine agreements, Mr. Speaker, that have been ratified, that are consistent with our uh, net zero bargaining framework, Mr. Speaker. Most importantly, students uh, remain in school. There were no cuts to the classroom, Mr. Speaker. There were modest wage increases that were offset by finding other savings throughout the collective agreement. But let just let me just say, Mr. Speaker, on the uh, the benefits, um, we're taking more than a thousand different benefit plans for teachers and education workers, moving them to a handful of provincial trusts. And I think that it would be interesting to the member opposite to know that for years, from the time I was a school trustee, from the time that the Minister of uh, Education was a school trustee, there has been a conversation in the education sector about how to rationalize the benefits packages across the province, Mr. Speaker. That will save money, Order. Mr. Speaker, and that's why making Thank that you. move was so important. Important. Thank you. Supplementary. Speaker, this is at least $300 million taken out of the education budget. That is not a rounding error. I know the Premier is not an accountant, but that's $300 million more million than she told this House. This is also, of course, the same Premier that told us the cancelled gas plants were only $40 billion before we found out the true cost was $1.2 billion. She is cutting demonstration schools across this province, special ed cuts everywhere. Parents are fundraising for basic necessities in our classroom. I ask the Premier, what does $300 million in education funding mean to her? Because it certainly doesn't mean pizzas and popcorn to me. Thank you. Again, Mr. Speaker, let me just... Let Sorry, I, I didn't recognize you, Premier. Carry on, please. Let me uh, let me just say, Mr. Speaker. Oh, let me just say, Mr. Speaker, that the uh, the changes in Order. the benefits, Mr. Speaker, are uh, changes that have been talked about in the sector for many years. Because when when the uh, school boards were amalgamated, Mr. Speaker, when the funding model changed in this province at the uh, at the hands of the previous government, Mr. Speaker, it only made sense to talk about how there could be savings in those benefits plans. Yeah. Finally, we've gotten to the point where we can do that, Mr. Speaker, yeah. where those benefit plans can be uh, can be amalgamated. There can be changes yeah. that will yeah. save yeah. money to the system. It will actually lower the cost of benefit plans through the power of bulk negotiation. It only makes sense, and Mr. Speaker. I actually would have thought this is the kind of efficiency and yeah, savings that that answer. party would support. Final supplementary. Speaker, the Premier of Ontario just had the audacity to look at this assembly and say that she found $300 million in efficiencies wow. when it cost more than a net zero, cost $300 million. You can't trust this government anymore when they tell us it's going to cost one thing. Stop the clock. Um, the chippiness is pretty high, and I can read it, so I'm going to start looking at individuals. Carry on, please. The power worker deals had a net zero deal until we found out that it was $87 million more dollars to buy Hydro One shares. The teachers' union deal was supposed to be net zero until we found out it's at least $300 million more dollars. You have one job, and that is to find net zeros in this government in order to balance the deficit, which you have no uh, objective of doing. So I would like to want, uh, understand from the Premier of Ontario, you've assigned somebody in the Treasury Board to find net zero deals. Question. You failed
failed at every turn. What is the Deputy Premier's job, anyway, if she can't here, here. find deals here? Minister of Education. Premier, Minister of Education. Yes, thank you very much, Speaker, and I'm delighted to answer this question. There were a thousand different benefit plans. Some of those benefit plans might have had 15 or 20 people in them. They were extraordinarily expensive. We have been talking since this problem in education, since I was the president of the public school boards, but we had no legal authority to do anything about it, to bring everybody together. For the first time in this, in this round of bargaining, because we had the authority to negotiate centrally, we actually have the ability to bring a thousand inefficient benefit plans into five or six pools. But when you set things up like that, there's an upfront Thank you. investment. Thank you. The seat, new question, the Leader of the Third Party. My Thank apologies. You, Speaker. Thank you so much, Speaker. My question is for the Premier. Uh, seniors organizations from across Ontario have written to the Premier. I'm sure she's received the letter. Uh, they said, quote, we are asking you to cancel the fee increases for seniors and uphold the principle of universality for our health care system. Will the Premier listen to the nearly 60 organizations who have written to her and cancel her plan to increase the cost of prescription drugs, drugs for seniors? Thank you, Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I know that the leader of the third party is very aware that uh, that there is a regulation that has been posted, that there is a consultation uh, going on right now, and that and that those organizations will be obviously very interested in uh, giving us feedback, and we will be listening very carefully to them. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the leader of the third party also knows that uh, our policy that uh, that was uh, the member from Hamilton East Stony Creek means that 173,000 more seniors will pay no deductible, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. Seniors who paid deductible previously will pay no deductible. That was the intention of the uh, that was the intention of the plan. And Mr. Speaker, we said that on the second part of the plan, we were going to be listening to people as the regulation was posted. And if we didn't get that part right, then we would adjust it. I think the leader of the third party knows that. We've said that repeatedly, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. New question, the leader of the third party. Thank you, Speaker. My next question is for the Premier, but I have to say what we don't support on this side of the House in the NDP benches is the abandonment of the universal health care system in this province. The Premier has received the Premier has received a letter, Speaker, that is signed by the Alliance of Seniors. Stop the clock. I'm uh Well, there's, there's going to be the member, the Minister of Aboriginal Affairs is now uh, on notice. Anyone else want to comment? Leader. The Premier has received a letter that's been signed by the Alliance of Seniors, local health coalitions, CARP chapters, Jewish, Chinese and Tamil seniors associations, unions and retiree associations. Speaker. Will this Premier tell these groups how many seniors will see their drug costs nearly double? Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Well, again, I will say that I understand, I really do understand that it serves the leader of the third party's political purposes to, um, to set a fire where there isn't one, Mr. Speaker. The reality is, the reality is that our budget removes all costs for drugs from 173,000 students. There was a second part to that. Uh, that seniors. Seniors, seniors, sorry. I'm talking about um, seniors. Removes, removes the cost of drugs from 173,000 yes. more seniors, Mr. Speaker. And we said that in terms of the, uh, the deductible, that we would consult, we would look at that, Mr. Speaker, and if we had got the threshold wrong, we would change it. That's the process we're undergoing right now, Mr. Speaker. The leader of the third party knows that. She knows that Answer. seniors have an opportunity to give us feedback, and we've said we will change it, Mr. Speaker, if we got it wrong. Thank you. Supplementary. Speaker, it's not just myself as the leader of the Ontario New Democrats that are concerned about this. It's 60 seniors organizations that are setting a fire, Speaker, and that's what the Premier needs to pay attention to. 
The Premier just isn't listening to Ontarians once again. First, it was the decision to sell Hydro One, even though everybody knows that's a bad idea, and now it's her plan for seniors' drugs. Unless the Premier cancels her plan, potentially millions of seniors in Ontario are going to see their drug costs shoot through the roof. Seniors groups, seniors groups are telling her to cancel this plan because it will undermine the fundamental principles of our health care system uh, that our health care system has been built on in this province and in this country. Can the Premier tell Question. Ontarians what happened to the basic idea that government should be listening to people and governing for all Ontarians? Thank you. Oh, Mr. Speaker, and listening to people is exactly what we did, which is why 173,000 more seniors will not pay any deductible, Mr. Speaker. That is exactly what we did. Now, Mr. Speaker, you know, as I have said, there is a regulation in place. There is comment on the, uh, the regulation that we are receiving right now. We have said, Mr. Speaker, if that second part of the initiative we didn't get right, we will change the, uh, we'll change the threshold. But, Mr. Speaker, we will not do that because the NDP is ranting at us, Mr. Speaker, in an irrational way when we've already said that we're going to consult on this, we're going to look at it, and if we got it wrong, we'll change it. So the leader of the third party, for her own political reasons, can ramp up the rhetoric. She can pretend that somehow this is a cause that she has championed. Mr. Speaker, 173,000 seniors in this province will pay no more deductible. We will make a change if that's necessary. We will listen to the people yes, of the province. We will listen to the seniors who are affected. We will not Thank follow you. the lead of the NDP.